night I walked into Bruce's office, and when he came into my life, man, anybody ever been a little worried about their future? <laughs> anybody ever never got excited about anything that had to do with work? And uh, when I got exposed to this business, I felt like I had won the lottery. I bought it hook, line, and sinker, day one. And uh, more dreams have come true for us than we even had. It's amazing what can happen to you if you really find something you believe in and if you persist through all kinds of suffering and difficulty. <laughs> wow, I did not expect that. I want to thank uh, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> something called call reluctance. I was afraid to talk to people. Anybody ever been afraid? Anybody an introvert? Or, you know, that was really... And then I met her and she believed in... Uh, we kind of hit it off. And then I brought her to a Andy Young Fast Start School. And she had a business degree from the University of Texas. And she said, wow, this has everything. Fills a need great products. She had her, one of her uncles was in the insurance business. So when she found out whole life was a ripoff, five-term investments, she, she endorsed the business, which meant a lot to me. And she believed in me. And because of her belief in faith and uh, her support over these years, uh, we wouldn't be here without my beautiful wife, Roxanne. Knowing is not wisdom, doing is wisdom. 
And uh, I think, you know, if you want to be successful in our business, you got to really believe in the companies you represent, the companies you work with. And I'm going to kind of help you understand that. And then you have to believe in the compensation system. And we have a very, how would you describe our compensation system? Amazing, brilliant, brilliant uh, unique, huh? A hybrid, it's, yeah, it's totally, yeah, uh, kind of a combination of things, but how else? Unlimited, spectacular, but it's also what? It's kind of complicated. I mean, to try to explain to somebody our comp compensation system, the companies, the concepts, the need, and then kind of what to do with all of that, that's not an easy, you know, there, there, this, is, this is simple, but it's not that simple. There's a lot going on here, and there's a lot of depth to what we do, but I'm going to try to do my best at it. And uh, first of all, I'll tell you one thing. If there's one thing that I've noticed, Gordon, is that one of the biggest problems that I have found people face, guess what it is? They don't make enough money. They don't make enough money. If the, if, if the average American made an extra $2,000 a month or $3,000 a month and knew what to do with it, how big of a difference would that make? I mean, if, 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 you, knew, if you knew what to do with your money, but you had an extra $2,000, $3,000 a month, or, now obviously the more the better, but if you had more money coming into your household, how would that do for your future? Would that make a difference, yes or no? Yes. Okay, so I don't know if there's anything, yes, you can stop going to Starbucks. Yes, you can stop eating at lunch. But I don't know if there's anything more important that anyone can do is to find a way to grow their income. Can I get an amen? amen. Okay, so, so this is a way to do that. That obviously, the first meeting I went to, you saw the collection of, uh, of uh, what would you call this collection of people that you just saw up here earning over six figures? Eclectic? Is that diverse? I mean, if, if these people can do it, guess what? I mean, what's your excuse, right? If all these people can do it, that means what for you? You have a chance. True or false? All right, so, man, how can you make more money? We're going to hear from a couple shortly that's making, made $61,000 last month, came in here from nothing, making a half a million dollars a year. Can you imagine if you learn some things and you apply those things, and then you're making a half a million dollars a month in two, three, four, five, even 10 years. Hey, would you sign up to a program to be making a half a million dollars a year in 10 years? Would you sign up for that job? Yeah. Well, you're gonna hear from somebody who did it. Not made excuses, but actually is doing it. Okay, so the definition of a business is you have to find a need and fill it. That's what a business opportunity is. So the question is, do we have a need? And by the way, the bigger the need, the bigger the opportunity. So. Business 101, what are one of the problems? What's the need, okay? Business 101 teaches revenues minus expenses equals profits. The first step to solving a problem is what? Identifying the problem. And then acknowledging the problem. It's like saying, um, uh, mission control, we have a problem, okay? Well, what's most people's problem? Not enough money. But what's the cause? What is the root of that problem? Now, if I could have everybody, don't stand up if it's not true for you, but if it's true for you, please stand up if you would like to earn more money. If you would like to earn an extra 30,000 a year, 50,000 a year, extra 100,000 a year, stand up. Not everybody stand. It's okay. We still love. Okay. Now, I want if you have a job, I want to ask you a question. Remain standing if your employer wants to pay you more money. Remain standing if your boss at a job wants to pay you more money. What do you do? I'm sorry? I can't hear you. General manager at a gym. Nice. You get a salary? 
Would you like the salary to double? If you asked the, your upper to double your salary, what would they say? I can't hear you. Are you sure they can't? Have you studied their books? Okay. You get the point, right? Now let me ask you a question. Do I have another? Have you heard of the concept of financial interest? See, in order to do well, see, when I met Bruce, our compensation system says that the better, the more productive, if I get licensed and if I become productive, we went into business as a partnership, and the better I did, the more production I we created, investments, insurance, and the financial things that we do, the better I did, the better he did. So he has what's called a financial interest in Christian David, meaning I understood day one that if I was successful, Alicia, it wouldn't hurt him, it wouldn't cost him, it would help him. Because Bruce Koch had a financial interest in Christian David. Now I was working at the Hamburger Hamlet as a waiter, making $2.01 an hour plus tip. Now let's just look at the $2.01 an hour. Now why was the Hamburger Hamlet paying myself and all the waiters and all the bartenders there $2.01 an hour? Why was it that number? Because by law, they couldn't pay us any less. They would have been breaking the law if they had paid us $2 an hour. Now if the law was $2 an hour, would they have been paying us $2.01 an hour or $2 an hour? So I was looking at my $2.01 and then I looked at our comp. I'm going to go through. I don't have a lot of time to go through all the details of the comp, especially since I'm spending so much time right here in the beginning and I have 72 slides to go through. But it's important for you to realize that if you're investing eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, 60 hours a week, working for somebody that doesn't want to pay you more, who's got a problem? You do. Now, if you recognize the problem, I'm sorry, Marcel, I'm getting excited. It's like, like this little idea changed my life. I said, at the Hamburger Hamlet, I work construction, I worked in retail. It didn't take me long to realize that these companies didn't want to pay Christian David much money. Have you noticed that where you work? So I had to find, if I was motivated and ambitious, and anybody like nice things? You like, like, you like cheap food or good food? You want to live in the worst neighborhood or the best? You want to send your kids to the worst schools or the best schools? You want to buy the, you want to drive the crappiest car, a nice, safe car? Ah, I've got all these car problems. You don't have a car problem, you got a money problem. You can't afford a good car. I never had any money problems. Every time for 40, my car starts. Why? You know what I'm saying? That if you have, if you don't have the money and all you're driving is a Shanita, she needs a muffler. She needs a tube. She needs a transmission. You're gonna have a problem. But it's not the car. It's your income. And it's your income because who you work for doesn't want to pay you any money. True or false? Now I know that's simple, but it's big. If you leave here saying, "Oh my gosh, I have a problem. I know the problem, and I gotta find a way to fix the problem," and maybe this is it. Maybe this is it. And then you say, you know what? I'm at least going to try. I'm going to try to learn this business. I'm going to try to get the exam. I'm going to try to set appointments. I'm going to try to help people financially. The most amazing things can happen to you. True or false? Woo, yeah. he's awesome. <laughs> okay, is there a need? Will you tell me? 70, there, there's this thing called paycheck to paycheck. Well, is anybody living paycheck to paycheck? It's just 75% of the people. Got a problem? If you're living paycheck to paycheck, and you miss one paycheck, can't pay your rent or your mortgage, is that a problem or not? If you're living paycheck to paycheck, and you sleep well at night, I'm suggesting, well, I, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Why so many people living paycheck to paycheck? Why? Okay, well, what do you think about this? 
In the year 2000, the average car cost $22,000. Now it's $49,000. In the year 2000, the average home was $167,000. Now it's $402,000. In the year 2000, the average American made $32,000. Now the average American makes $39,000. Do you see a problem? Yes. And what's the problem? Cars and houses are more than double the cost and people haven't even gotten close to doubling their income. Not even close to doubling their income. Now that's called a what kind of problem? Mathematical. And when you have a mathematical problem like that, everything getting more expensive and your income not growing, like most people's income have not grown, what does that cause? That causes a massive debt problem. So is there a debt problem in the country? Well, if you look at the total credit card debt right now, it's one, it's almost 1.4 trillion, and in the United States of America, the land of opportunity, the home of the free and the brave, the credit card debt has never been higher than it is right now. If you look at the average card holder, it's almost $9,000 or over $8,000 of debt. The student loan debt is a trillion seven, $39,000 per student. Imagine graduating college and you have a $40,000 student loan. And now you gotta rent an apartment, got to furnish the apartment or buy a house, buy a car, pay for your, uh, get off your parents' cell phone plan, uh, get your own insurances. I mean, and you, and you got, I mean, um, this is caught, right now the personal debt is 25 trillion. The um, average debt per citizen, 75,000. The interest people are paying is 20,000 on the debt and the average <laughs> savings per family is $10,000. See a problem? Now let me ask you a question. We throw this, we throw this around a lot. Oh, do you like to help people? Oh yeah, I like to help people. Well, you want to go set some appointments? No, I don't want to set appointments. Okay. This business is for people who really want to help people. Uh, health care was five grand, now it's fifteen thousand a year, tuition was ten thousand, it's now twenty-six thousand a year, and this whole thing about retirement, it used to be a three-legged stool. In the early, in the late 70s, 1978, a 401k was in, 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 in invented, and in, the, in 1981, 401ks became mainstream where companies got rid of pensions. My dad never invested any money. He never saved any money. Why? He didn't have to. He stayed at the job for 39 years, and when he retired, he got 80% of his salary until he died, and my mom gets 70% of his salary until she dies. How many of you have a plan like that where you work? They did away with them because they were running out of money. They knew it wouldn't work, just like Social Security will be out of money in the year 2033. So the, the, the concept of financial independence, which is the purpose of our business, the whole point of financial education, the whole point of having a financial plan, the whole point of investing is to one day have enough money working for you so you don't have to work for money anymore. Now, would you rather work hard for money or would you rather have your money work hard for you? Okay, so Bob and Mary, we show people how to one day never have to work again because we show them how much money they need to have working for them and we show them how to accumulate that amount of money. Do you think that's a good or bad thing? Do you think that's something people need in this country? If you stop working today, how long would your savings last? Okay? How you doing? You need a little of what we got over here? Oh no, you're doing good. You ever heard anybody say, I, 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 I'm good. I'm good. Are we good? Oh, really? If you stop working, how long would your savings last? Not most people aren't good. So how much do you need? You need 25 times your annual expenses. Rule of thumb. So if you want $50,000 a year, you multiply that times 25, and that equals a million, 250,000. If you wanted to retire right now, today, on 50 grand a year, you need how much? One million, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Stand up if you have a million dollars, two hundred fifty thousand. No, don't worry about it. Okay. okay. But if you don't have that today, if you let's say I want to get a 24-year goal of having fifty thousand dollars a year, because of inflation, every 24 years at three percent inflation, a dollar turns into fifty cents. So if a dollar is 50 cents in 24 years, and you need $50,000 a year today, how much do you need in 24 years? 100,000 a year, so now you need 2.5 million. How many people in America today have a plan in place that they're gonna have $2.5 million in 24 years? 
Have you met any of them? That, you know what I'm saying? How many people? Almost nobody. Now, is that a problem? How many people in 25 years would like to have $2.5 million? Well, guess what we show people how to do? Is that what the IUL person should do? doing? Is that what your banker's doing? Is that what your neighbors are talking about? So do people have a problem, yes or no? I know this is uh, Oh, well, look, look, take a look at this. I, I saw this. Phil put this up uh, last week. This says 49% of people have zero for retirement. One out of two people. If you add uh, another 9%, that's, that's 60%. If you add another 13%, have less than 15,000. That's a 78, 8% don't have 100,000. And that's how much you need in a year. So if you have 100 grand and you retire and all you got is 100 grand and you want 50,000 years a day, but it's 24 years, if you only have $100,000 saved, how long can you afford to retire? What well, year, then what you gonna do? You ain't gonna be as pretty as you are right, are right now. You ain't gonna be wanting to pay the price like you are willing to pay right now. True or false, you might not be as healthy as you are right now. That's a serious problem, true or false. So what we try to do is help people avoid that problem. Social security is a disaster. 21 minutes left. Yeah. I ain't even gotten to the solutions or compensation of the companies or nothing. Keep going. All right, let me fly. Okay, anybody stuck in something called a rat race? What's a rat race? Working, working, working. You don't have much money. In January, you work all year. Guess what? December, guess what? You ain't got to know how much money. How many people are working all year and not making much financial progress? That is called the what? Rat race. We're trying to help people get out of the rat race. Is there a way out? If so, what is it? Okay. Is there a way out? Yes or no? Yes. yes, there's a way out. Have people gotten out? Yes, people have gotten out. Can you get out? Yes, you can get out. Is it going to be easy? Ah, I'm not going to say it's going to be easy. Would it be worth it? Yes. Get out of the rat race? I think so. Okay. So how do you get out? I don't have time to get into this. This is what we do right here. I could spend an hour on this and not even do it justice. Just that one page on why life insurance, what kind of life insurance, how much insurance, why you need the insurance. Uh, the next step, cash flow planning. Anybody ever wasted any money or made any impulse purchases? You ever bought anything that went down in value? You know, most people, their whole life, they buy things that go down in value. And that's not how you win the money game. To win the money game, you gotta invest in things that go up in value. That's not so deep, right? Things depreciate or things appreciate. What are you buying? Where's most of your money going? If it's going to things that down in value, guess what? You're gonna stay in the rat race. And if, if that's where you wanna be, fine, don't change a thing. But if you wanna escape the rat race, you gotta make wiser financial choices, true or false. What's wrong with talking to people about that? Next, you gotta have an emergency fund, you gotta have a will, you gotta have a invest for retirement, know your financial independence number, be investing the right amount on a monthly basis, investing that money wisely and properly. You, uh, you want to uh, buy, a, you wanna be renting in retirement? Nope. Rent go up or down in the future? Uh, Anybody renting? Folks, home ownership, you notice, the interest rates and the prices and stuff. If most people are giving up on the American dream of, of owning a home, why? Because of the cost their income, they don't have the money. You have a heart for people? When people say no to you, is it, do you get depressed and down or do you feel sorry for them? See, when people say no to you, people say no to me, I feel sorry for them because they have no idea what we do. You can't feel sorry for yourself. You gotta get connected to a purpose and a mission of helping and serving people purpose of life is a life of purpose. The reason you're alive is because you have a purpose. Do you know it? Yeah. If you don't know it, you better find one. Maybe this is it. Helping people win the money game. Okay. So anyway, finance 101. Uh, most people are told work hard and put your money in the bank. And that's called a financial intermediary. And when you put money in a bank or a life insurance policy, what does the bank or the life insurance company do with the money? What do banks do with the money? They lend it, what do insurance companies do with your premiums? They invest it. Banks lend, insurance companies invest. They're a financial intermediary, in other words, a fancy word for middleman. If you, work, if you use the word financial intermediary, it will make you sound smarter. 
Now, they earn on what on mortgages? About six now? They were seven, now they're coming down a little. What do they earn on the national average credit card rate? It is 25, 26, 28, you know. So they're earning from high 20s to six on the best loans mortgages. And then what do they pay us? Today, they're gonna pay you zero to four. True or false? CDs are all renewing now, they were five, they're coming back down to four. And that's tying your money up for five years, okay? So, we say instead of giving your money to a bank or an insurance company and letting them use it and letting them earn a high rate of return so they make the money, we say instead eliminate them, get them out of your life, invest in the equities, invest in the good companies yourself, invest in real estate yourself, invest in appreciating assets yourself so you earn the high return yourself because those profits and rates of return are returned back to you and if you cut out the middleman you can win the money game and if you don't you will lose. Does that make sense? Now, could this be true? Or is it true? Now, the most powerful rule in finance is something called the rule of 72. Let you know how long it takes your money to double. It's the most, the most important rule in personal finance. Okay? Let you know how long it takes your money to double. At 1%, your money doubles every 72 years. At 4%, your money doubles every 18 years. So if a 29-year-old put $50,000 in a 4% account at the bank, best case, at 65, they're gonna have how much? $200,000. If they put it at 12%, they're gonna have how much? $3.2 million. That's a $3 million difference. Now, is that a small or a big difference? What difference is it? That's the difference in the rich and the poor. That's the difference. The number one mistake investors make the number one mistake savers make is what? Write this down. Dean Francis told me this 27 years ago, and I never forgot it. He said that on this page, he said the number one mistake investors make, savers make is, and then he said these three or four words. He said, wrong investment selection. Just moving your money, the same amount of money, the same amount of time to make a $3 million difference. So what we do is show people how to go from a low return to a high return so they can have instead of 200,000, a little bit of money, have enough money, $3 million. What's wrong with doing that for people? Could you feel good about sharing that with people? Now, do you think the, you know, it's like the question here is like, how do banks and insurance companies make their money? How does a bank make their money? Huh? Yeah, they, they, they use this rule against you. Do you think the bank knows the rule of 72? Do you think the bankers know the rule of 72? Yes. Yeah. Now, have you ever been in a bank? When was the last time you went to a bank and they explained to you the rule of 72? <laughs> now, why didn't they explain the rule of 72 to you? Because they like you ignorant. They want to keep you ignorant. They want to keep you giving them your hard-earned money so they can do what? Get rich and keep you right where you are. Okay, so. Now, if, they, and if you're not putting your money in a bank, if you, if you have a, a life insurance agent come in your house, they're gonna say, oh, we got this fancy index universal life, protects you on the downside, has great participation in the upside, it's like a poor savings, you get all your money back, it's like free insurance, it's gonna take care of your retirement, your daily living in a nursing home, if you ever get disabled, it's gonna take care of your disability, and it's gonna do all these wonderful things. Is that true? Okay, I'm not even gonna get into that all the time. I wanna get into the exciting stuff. We believe in mutual funds investing, why? Um, cash value is sold. Why? Because the insurance companies make more money and they pay their agents a whole lot more money. If you sell a $5,000 premium and you're an insurance agent, you can make up to $7,000. 7, 
Max commission on a mutual fund, $250. You got life insurance in your house, try to sell you insurance, they want to make $7,500, $250. They, they don't sell term insurance and mutual funds because they're wrong. They sell cash value and not term, why? To make as much money as possible off of you. Do you think that could be true? Okay, uh, let me ask you this. Oh, Gordon, I was gonna say your testimony, but we'll catch that, maybe some of you know that. Okay, stock market has averaged for 100 years, how much? 10% of you, a little over. Is it important to know history? Like if you wanna make an investment, you got some money to invest, but you don't know what gold has done, you don't know what silver has done, you don't know what government bonds or municipal bonds or treasury bills or treasury notes, or you don't know what small cap stocks, mid cap stocks, large cap stocks, you don't know what group, you don't know what a group growth fund is from a value fund, you don't know international stocks. If you don't know anything about, uh, you don't know what CDs have done, you don't know what insurance policy, if you don't know anything, anything about any of those places where you can put your money, you don't know what real estate's done, how can you make an informed decision? But all of a sudden, if you know the history of investments, now you can make some, impo some informed choices of where to put your money. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's all we do. We show people how mutual funds work. Mutual funds make money three ways. A bank makes money one way. Dividends, capital gains, capital appreciation. And this is one of the funds that, and I'm not, I'm not soliciting a mutual fund to you. I just want to show you, when I went into Bruce Koch's office, within very early in our career, he took us to a mutual fund wholesaler that sold Pioneer Mutual Funds, and they showed me something called a historical illustration. They were not showing me what the mutual fund was going to do, they showed me what the mutual fund already did, and they said, if history typically repeats itself, and it generally does, if this fund does in the future what it's done in the past, look at what could happen to you. And I really perked up because I was 23 years old. Who wants to be a millionaire? I want to be a millionaire. Do you want to be a millionaire? Okay, so I really was listening to this. And they said that in this example that if you put in $50 a week, 200 a month, how many 20, and you're 22 years old, how many 22 year olds waste 50 a week? Okay, so it's 200 a month instead of wasted. Instead, I know this is a wild concept. Instead of wasting 50 a week, invest $50 a week. And if you do that from age, if you go back to 1948, and you do that to 1994, you have $2.3 million. You put in 108,000 in your account, in this fund, you have 2.3 million. And now you're gonna enter the second phase of your life which is the withdrawal phase. We're gonna do a 6% withdrawal. So the first year of your retirement, you take out 134,000 to supplement your social security if you get it. And you do that to age 95, retire at 67, retire at 95. And what happens here is, you're, when you're 66, you get 153,000. When you're, um, 72, uh, you get, you see the numbers, the income goes up and down. If you can't see this, I'm sorry, it's important, I'll summarize it. But when you're 90, you get $320,000. When you're, you die at the end of this year in 2024, your last year alive, you got 400,000 from your mutual fund. So you took it, you put in 108,000 while you worked, sacrificed, and saved. During your retirement, you took out $7.3 million, and then you died. And then you still have in your account $6.9 million. Now, I'm 23 years old, and I'm looking at a, an investment that a person put in 100 grand, took out 7 million, and died, and left six million dollars to their kids. Now, who, who, how many people would feel good about that plan? Okay, well, uh, do you, can, uh, how many people need to know about that plan? Everybody needs to know about that plan. Within two months of meeting Bruce, I had my investment license. Why? 
Because I thought everybody should know that. I thought everybody would want to hear that news. And you know what I found out 39 years later? Two things. Everybody loves that story. And number two, when I met Lori Wexler, Pioneer Funds, 1985, I was like George, hoping it was true. Now in the last 39 years, guess what I found out? It was freaking true! Because the same thing happened with our hypotheticals. Ain't that something? I was hoping and praying, Boca, that it was true when I was learning. And now 39, oh, with everything, every fiber in my bones, you can run the same hypos, and our mutual funds have done the exact same things that were shown to me 40 years previous. Does that give you some confidence? So Fidelity, they have $8 trillion in management. That's one of our problems. Who would have a problem representing Fidelity? A, a Franklin Templeton, a trillion six. How's that sound? We got the best money managers in the country, Rocket Mortgage. They do our loans. They're the number one lender in the country. Maryland, I hear we're going to be next summer. Woo! Imagine, yes, exactly. Free first cross. You know, imagine being able to do someone's mortgage, refinance, investments, 401k, college fund, term insurance, <coughs> auto insurance, home insurance, will. Uh, home automation, home security, through one person. Okay, so anyway, annuities, equitable, okay. So you, okay, who owns Answer Financial? Allstate, did you know that? So we, that's our property and casualty division, legal protection, okay, so anyway. All right, so I got, okay, a little bit. In this company, they put all, well, Prime, Prime America, I heard of that. Prime America, look. Oh! Well, Forbes said it was like America's best insurance company. What's with the ugh? Um, uh, what about this? Newsweek said it's like the greatest place to work. AM Best gave it an A plus rating, superior finance, better business bureau. You heard of that? Gave us A plus. Why ugh? Why ugh? Oh, shoot. Um, now our fortune, it's a fortune 1,000, what, the, when I met Bruce, I didn't even know what a stock was, <laughs> okay, much less fortune 1,000, Dow Jones 30, okay, um, Dow Jones 30, fortune 1,000, what is that? That's the top 1,000 American companies ranked by revenues, now I heard, I don't know if it's true, but if you Google how many companies in America, I hear it's 30 million. It, 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 out of 30 million businesses in America, they pick a top thousand in revenues, and you're one of those companies. Is that something to go up about? Or is that something to be proud of? Now, what do you think about this little statistic? The company went public in 2010 at $15 a share. If you had uh, $20,000 at that time and had, I'm not saying buy the stock, and I'm not saying buy mutual funds. Okay, let me get that clear. I am not soliciting any securities. This is for educational and training purposes, purposes only. Okay? If you had bought, that would have bought you 1,300 shares as of my birthday last week, okay? That would have been worth $370,000. Now, if you bought a $20,000 property and it turned into a $370,000 property in 14 years, how would you feel about that investment? Who wish you would have bought a little of pride 14 years ago? Hello. Okay, now, Roxanne and I's stock awards, Rox uh, Primerica says, if you help us build the company, we will give you equity in the company you're helping us build. So because of that, Roxanne and I have been awarded since 2010 13,946 shares, which times a share price of 278 last week is $3,876,000. Well, 
Fidelity Management and Research. They own 9% of the company. Fidelity owns all they been... Folks, how credible is our firm? How credible is what we do? How much support and credibility and technology and compensation and software can you take get access to to improve your Hey, Casimir, I don't even have time to get into my favorite part, which is compensation. You know what I mean? But maybe y'all have figured out you can do okay here by now. <laughs> but why should maybe, if you're new, why should you consider the financial industry? I think this is a good point. I don't think this is everything, but I think it's something to consider. Number one. In the finance industry, there's more people earning $100,000 a year and $100,000 a month than any other industry in the United States of America. As a matter of fact, Forbes says, what industry are you most likely to be a millionaire? By the way, for those of you who are not yet a millionaire, how many of you would like to become one? Okay, so if you would like to become one, do you think it would help to go and get involved in the industry that has, that gives you the best chance of becoming one? Now, that is true. The reason most people or more people become a millionaire in the financial industry is not an accident. Why is that the industry that the most people have the most amount of financial success? Why is that? Don't all speak up at once. <laughs> Here's why. Because if you're in the industry that you get paid the most, and you are in the business that you know what to do with your money, you have a financial education, if you make great money and you know what to do with it, what does that create? Abundance, prosperity, freedom, financial independence. And don't you think you're ready to get some of that in your life? If you are, I think you're in the right place. I appreciate the opportunity to share with you this morning. I'm sorry I didn't get any compensation. Maybe next time.